This is a MiFi router called 4G Tele2. So yes, it does support 4G, but they decided to call it 4G, which feels like a very low effort branding decision, but who am I to judge? For the uninitiated, let's get the definitions out of the way. This is a mobile Wi-Fi router, meaning if you put a SIM card with a data bundle in it, you can have a Wi-Fi connection wherever you are, as long as there is network coverage. Also, MiFi is actually not a technical term for this piece of tech, but it's stuck, so I guess the marketing guys win again. It comes with a short micro USB cable to charge it, a removable battery, a startup guide inside the box and some configurations. The front of the MiFi has a power button and three status indicators for your battery, Wi-Fi broadcast, and SIM network availability. So how do you get started with it? First you need to take a pic of this sticker, or if you are old school, write all this info down. What we are interested in is the SSID, the Wi-Fi key, the IP, the username and password. You chuck the SIM card in, I know mine looks Frankenstein, but it's a Zol SIM card for those that are wondering, yes, Tel1 and Zol are both supported in this MiFi. Then you throw in the battery and close the back and turn it on. Now you can grab a laptop or your phone and in the Wi-Fi settings search for the one we wrote down or took a pic of earlier. Connect to it and for password again use the one labeled Wi-Fi key. Since there are no internet settings on it, you obviously won't have internet access, but luckily for you, I am about to show you how to put these settings. After, I ask you nicely to kindly click on the subscribe button if you have not already. We're just trying to reach 5,000 followers by June this year. Then you open your browser on your phone or your computer. In the search bar, enter the IP address 192.168.0.1 and click enter. You'll see this window showing you the name of the SIM you have inserted, uh, yeah. So Zol pretty much shows numbers, but don't freak out, it's all good. Click on the settings over on the top right, enter the username and password. Both are admin. Sometimes you won't be asked to enter the username, just the password, it's still admin. Now click on settings again and click on dial up. In the drop down menu, click on profile management and relax, don't be intimidated, you only need to fill up two boxes there. Go right ahead and click on manual, then add new, then in the profile name you enter the name of your service provider. I'm typing liquid telecom because well, I'm using Zoll. In the next box, written APN for my Zoll users out there, you type liquidtelecom.net with no caps or spaces. Click set as a default and your MiFi is all set up. If you don't have any internet yet and you have a bundle and network, you can remove the battery and reinsert it again. It usually solves this kind of problems. So all this was just a process of getting it set up. But how is this router in terms of performance? Well, thanks to the area I'm at, there is no fiber or ADSL from any service provider, meaning I have spent a great deal of time experiencing all mobile service providers. I also have been using my LG as a Wi-Fi hotspot till I got this MiFi for review. Just like my LG, the MiFi supports up to 10 connected devices, which is suitable for a household of three people. I say three because on average, each individual has three devices. It can either be two phones and a laptop or two phones and a tablet, but usually it's free. Reception is fine, pretty similar to the reception I am getting on my LG, which is good enough. Wi-Fi range is just slightly better than my phone, is able to cover around 75 to 80% of a four bedroomed house versus 60 to 70% my LG can offer. It also supports all SIM cards in Zimbabwe except for Africom and Powertel, so you're pretty much covered there. What about battery life? I mean, it's an important part of MiFi devices because of their mobility capabilities. And this one has some very decent, if not great battery life. I managed to get consistently eight hours of usage from it before it went in the red. I mean, the box does say 10 hours, but given the circumstance, the eight hours getting was pretty impressive. What is more impressive is that Zol coverage in my area is poor. The best I got was two out of four bars of network. And if you did not know, a phone or MiFi uses more power when the network signal is poor than when it is good. Add to that the fact that Zol and Tel1 networks are very power hungry. If you have ever used either one of these two SIMs in a phone, you'll know what I mean. 
I was thoroughly impressed that it could last that long. For a router that's got such low effort branding, it is a pretty solid performer. The price is not bad either, it's just 45 US dollars for this one and you can grab yourself one on Texim.market and will deliver. So in summary, what do you expect a MiFi to do and how well does this MiFi do these things? SIM card support is great. Every mobile service provider is supported except for just Africom and Powertel. The number of Wi-Fi devices you can connect to it uh, is 10, which is good enough for most people and most households, but for medium to large households and offices, it will struggle to cope. Battery life is amazing. Most MiFi routers are quoted at 8 hours, but can guarantee you something like 6, so getting 8 from this one is properly impressive. One small feature that's lacking, which I feel must be standard on all MiFi routers, is a USSD feature within the settings. This would allow you to check your data balance as well as buy bundles without removing the SIM from the MiFi and then looking for a phone to put it in just to do these things. But this is a problem just for those that are going to be using their Telesel Econet or Net1 line in this MiFi. Those that are using Zoll and Tel1, there is an app for you to perform these tasks, so there is no need for that. Anyway, this is my review of the 4G MiFi router. It's my first time reviewing a Wi-Fi router, so I'm welcoming all the feedback. If I missed anything, hit me up in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.